Hi everyone, in this video I'm gonna do some concept sketching with Crease Pencil in 2.8. Um, I really am digging into the Crease Pencil, I think it has huge potential and I think it will evolve in something really amazing for uh, concept art artists. I think it, it has the potential to also kind of disrupt the workflows for concept artists uh, over the over the years in production I've noticed a lot of concept artists uh, 2D concept artists that are kind of trying to dig into um, 3D concept art um, by using things like uh, sculpting tools like ZBrush and Keyshot to quickly render out something even if it's to use as a shortcut to then um, have a kind of a an easier time setting up the 3D space, the perspective and stuff like that for environment concept art. Or even for lighting, just rendering out basic 3D shapes and then painting over it so you have kind of a, um, a, a head start with, with the render. Um, but then most re mo more recently you also see a lot of concept artists that are just blocking stuff out in 3D just as, as a means of actual concepting. and. Uh, I think this is really great. I mean, obviously, it, it's still finding its place uh, inside of productions. Um, so most of the time, 3D concept art is not really usable in production. It, it is pre-production work. So the models then still have to be redone by um, character artists or environment artists and stuff like that. But it can it, it can kind of speed up production in that way and. Um, so it definitely has, is finding a place in, in production, especially in, in game production. Um, so I think that with, with Crease Pencil, in, uh, there's a potential of that whole field again evolving into something, something different, something that's potentially even more efficient. And it's just another tool for concept artists to to really. Um, increase their creativity and, and uh, connect more closely with the, the customer which would be the 3D artists and, and the, the other production artists. So I, I think this is I think it's really important that as the tools get better and better and, and less, um, less cumbersome um, to focus more and more on creativity because ultimately a lot of the the time that we spend doing technical uh, stuff like UV unwrapping and uh, even things like rigging and stuff like that, um, th those are processes that will ultimately just become automated and uh, the tools will take care of that and we as artists will have to worry about that stuff less and less. Um, so it'll become more and more important to focus on your creative qualities uh, as opposed to your technical qualities um, alternatively you can go the other way and, and really dig into um, programming more and stuff like that but um, that's not really what I'm, I'm interested in I'm, I'm, I'm an artist so I'm more interested in uh, expanding my creative tool set so like I said I think Crease Pencil has the potential to really kind of disrupt that that um, that workflow within the um, the industry, whether it's the games industry or or the film industry, um, but I think for concept artists uh, and even storyboard artists, probably especially for storyboard artists, once they get a hang of how to use cameras and stuff in in Blender, I think it will speed up their workflow. Not only will it speed up their workflow, but it, it'll also make their um, it'll make them a lot more attractive to uh, to clients so the value of a storyboard artist who is just gonna deliver 2d panels to the client compared to the value of a storyboard artist who's delivering those 2d uh, panels but additionally delivering um, animated uh, animated panels that were animated in blender with with uh, cameras and stuff like that and on top of that, maybe even the 3D scenes of the, the crease pencil um, uh, strokes in Blender to the client. And then whoever is going to uh, 
work it out in production, whether it's 3D environment artists, like the value for those people uh, or the value for the client is, is just, it, 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 it will expand a lot more. So the, so, so those people who are able to really adopt uh, those tools, they just become, um, they, they will have the ability to, to become more expensive to clients. And that's going to be a price that clients are going to be willing to pay. Um, so it's definitely in, in everyone's interest to to kind of uh, look at what's new in your in your industry and adopt new tools. It's not always easy, but um, but you can look at it in a different way. It, it is exciting. So something like Blender 2.8 and Crease Pencil is not really something that is traditionally part of my workflow. Um, but I can see a huge amount of potential of integrating it into my workflow. And um, so right now I'm just kind of figuring that part out and I'm just trying to get used to the, the tool set. Even, even though the tool set is not finalized and Blender 2.8 is still in, uh, in production, it, it's not a, it's not, doesn't have its final release yet. And even when it has its final release, the, um, the Grease Pencil toolset will still, you know, it'll still probably have to undergo a lot of um, iterations or evolutions in, in its, its usability. Uh, so, but that's something to be excited about because right now the Grease Pencil toolset is already really great. Uh, it's already replace, possibly replacing um, Photoshop for a lot of uh, concept artists and and this is kind of just the first iteration of the tool so with the, the rapidity or the speed at which Blender devs improve the tools compared to other software I think it's something to be really excited about for the next um, the next two years I mean I can only imagine what this tool set is going to look like just a year from now. Um, there's obviously so much potential for for this to be um, to be a great thing, and that's not even considering the animation part of it. I think originally it was kind of being developed for animators, but just for concept artists, this is really great. So I didn't think about it in, up until recently, but um, like I made a video a while back. I think it's probably my most viewed video and uh, it's a video about why blender is not the industry standard and i kind of explore the uh, the idea that it's because the the technical people the, the tech artists uh, and animate and technical animators they kind of define the pipelines for uh, game studios and so they rely on the tools that they have already built and switching entire pipelines in in a game studio and then changing all their tool sets and stuff like that is not uh, it's not something to take lightly then you still have to re-educate all your animators and you know so it, I think it's just a, too big of a hurdle for a lot of um, studios to to leave Maya behind and, and go with Blender and I mean there's a multitude of other reasons um, I think one of them that I recently thought about was or heard about was the fact that you know Blender doesn't really have a C++ uh, API so just working with Python is just not gonna be enough for really high-end productions who need to create their own tool sets but I don't know that much about that kind of stuff so um, I don't want to try uh, to talk about that uh, about stuff I don't know that much about but anyway like that kind of left for me Blender in this position where it it's always gonna be kind of a tool used by artists and it's never going to become like a real animation standard and stuff like that but I changed my opinion about that a little bit and it's partially because of how I'm seeing people embracing the, the new tools like Grease Pencil uh, so I think Blender will creep into the industry more from the the creative and uh, concept art side which is potentially even um, like more gonna be more powerful because the visual side is how you get people really excited about tools. So I think as um, concept artists and studios will start using Blender, they will start showing 
the results of their work to their colleagues, to the other devs, which will be animators and character artists, and then those people will get excited and interested about the tools and they'll try to mess around, experiment with it, and and then maybe even contribute to the Blender development, um, the feature development and stuff like that. So I think over time, Blender, I'm, I'm definitely very positive about the concept or the idea that Blender will become more of an industry standard and the part that I've changed my mind about a little bit is how that will happen um, and I do think that will happen through through like the creative concept art side uh, which is something to be really excited about I think so anyway uh, this was kind of an experimentation of um, concepting something out quickly I'm not a concept artist but I do like to mess around so I wanted to check out how comfortable it is to, to sketch uh, with grease pencil in 2.8 one thing that I showed in this video which I thought was really interested is creating clones of your grease pencil and then flipping it um, and scaling it down so that while you're concepting or drawing you kind of have that um, mirrored view of your of your concept and or even scale down view as a thumbnail so I thought that was pretty cool all right anyway I hope this was a useful video for you guys um, talk to you later